Please excuse me if I seem a little under the weather in this video. I am a little under the weather. I'm sure most of you by now, if you're watching this video on this particular channel, you are aware of the work that has been done towards porting Windows 11 to the original Microsoft Surface Duo. Gus on Twitter, Gus33000 in particular, if you'd like to follow them on Twitter, uh, that this individual and the team that they are now trying to work with have done some incredible work towards making this happen. And it now works relatively well. Both screens are working. The touch screen is working. Wi-Fi is working. In fact, I've posted videos on this channel playing some uh, you know, lower end video games via Steam on a uh, Surface Duo. Very, very impressive. Now, as long as that's been going on, there's also been talk about Duo 2 because Duo 2 is the Snapdragon 888. It's a little bit faster. It's got that faster processor. It's got more RAM. So a lot of people said, man, I wonder how well Windows would run on that because Windows is already running really well here in, just term in terms of general performance. This thing is a lot faster than you know some of the phones this has been done on in the past, like some of those old Lumia phones. This is a much faster device than those Lumia devices were. So how would it run on Surface Duo 2? Well, in the early days of this sort of conversation, it was seemingly not going to happen. And in fact, a lot of people uh, you know, would, would talk about how it's probably impossible for a few different reasons. There's one really big reason. With the Snapdragon 888, now I may get some of these details wrong because I'm not an expert in this stuff at all. I'm just regurgitating my best understanding of, of this particular topic uh, from conversations I've had with, with Gus on this topic. With the Snapdragon 888, things were much more complicated because there are some security features that Qualcomm has added for Android wherein the operating system, the firmware, actually run inside a virtual machine. It sort of partitions things, basically. The Snapdragon 888 treats the operating system as something that is kind of like not secured very well. So rather than having your hardware and then your software just running directly on that, there's basically like barriers between each little bit of software, the firmware, the operating system, and loads of other things. Everything's kind of partitioned. And this is done so that you don't have like data breaches, basically. There's no way to get into one thing and then have access to everything from there. A lot of modern phones have six or more virtual machines running concurrently at a really low level. And so because of this, it was going to be really difficult to get Windows running in this situation. Again, this is my best understanding of this. And on top of that, it's almost like if you can imagine a hard drive and you have all your different partitions, right? So, you know, this partition is this big and this is this big. Well, imagine that, but it's being done in RAM. When the thing boots up, it's using all these different little regions of RAM. And if any bit of that RAM is, is a little bit off, right? Like this region's using a little bit more now than it was before. This has to be accounted for because things have to shift around. So by virtue of this, some of the early work that Gus did on Duo 2 Windows 11, when there was a firmware update, it introduced a new feature, some kind of tweak to the display to prevent some, the display from doing something. I forget exactly what he said. This shifted these sort of partitions around and it broke the progress that he had already made and he had to kind of uh, not necessarily start over, but, but adjust to that change. So there's a lot going on. It's much more delicate than it was on the original Duo, but it does seem as though it is in fact, shockingly, going to be possible. Gus tweeted on October the 7th, well, this is alive, and that is a Duo 2 trying to boot into Windows 11. Now, he went on to say that, you know, this was still still not getting very, very far, but then he kind of blew the lid off things just a couple of days ago on October the 9th, actually just one day ago, he tweeted a thread. So we're going to go through this thread uh, as quickly as we can and kind of talk about what we're seeing here. So this is Windows on Surface Duo 2, Snapdragon 888. As of now, Windows is booting but you've only got one functional CPU core. You gotta keep this stuff in mind, right? You, got, you can't take this stuff for granted. Just because it's booting, that doesn't mean anything at all is working. And with Duo 1, he had to do a mixture of writing his own drivers and also taking drivers from the uh, Surface Pro X device, which ran an SQ1 or an SQ2 chip, which was basically a modified Snapdragon 855 
take those drivers, modify them, and bring them over. Now we're on a triple eight. Things are going to be different. It's going to be another combination of writing his own drivers, trying to modify existing drivers from the SQ1, SQ2, or maybe the ones he's written for Duo, modifying them to work on Duo 2 now. And because of that, yeah, the CPU only has one functional core, the display. Only one display is working. Touch is not working. Basically, what you see is what's working. It's displaying an image on one screen, and that's really about it. He goes on to say, this is much more early in a rough state than Duo 1 was in back in February. And there's also another deeper issue. There's an issue, he says, where the Windows kernel and WinLoad try to read an unsupported register. Basically, this is something that he might be able to patch himself, but I think, maybe, maybe I shouldn't say this, but there's work being going on to, uh, to try and address that particular problem, but it is a stumbling block right now. This is a pretty funny one, the glance bar on the back right now. Obviously, it doesn't know that it's closed, so you're getting just, you can just see kind of some windows there on that glance bar. But yeah, that's pretty much it right now. It is booting, and that's pretty much about it. This is baby steps forward. It is still incredibly impressive, maybe even more impressive than what happened with Duo, just simply because this was thought to maybe be absolutely, literally impossible by a lot of very intelligent people. Yet here we are. That being said, there's no instructions to do this as of yet. This is something he's going to have to work on for a lot longer. Duo One is probably going to remain the primary concern for Gus going forward just simply because it's much further along and he'd like to kind of complete some more of that before doubling back and working on something that no one's going to really be able to do anything with for potentially a really long time. But guys, I wanted to bring this update to you, let you guys know Duo 2, Windows 11 progress is being made. If you want to play with Windows 11 on a device like this though, maybe find one of these on eBay or Amazon for a few hundred dollars and do it here first. Don't hold your breath on Duo 2 being uh, of much use anytime in the near future. Guys, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I will see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.